to the Secret Gardens of Saugerties TV tour. The tour has been going for three years now. My name is Jamie Fine, and I started the tour and I run it. Why did I start the tour? Because as I would drive through Saugerties, I would notice an arbor or a trellis or a backyard garden, and I became curious about what was inside them. And I came to call them Secret Gardens. So I started the Secret Gardens of Saugerties tour. This is its third year, and this year the proceeds from the tour went to the Boys and Girls Club Saugerties unit. Um, we are going to visit six gardens today that were on this year's tour. They're lovely, lovely gardens, and each is different. There are woodland gardens with trails. There are gardens with heirloom flowers. There are gardens with very unique varieties of flowers. We're going to visit a garden that's owned by a master gardener that has really unusual varieties of flowers in it. We're going to visit the gardens of several artists who've taken their artistic talents and used them in their gardens. We're going to see a 1700 stone house with gardens around it. So there's lots to see today and I hope you'll stay with us and visit the gardens. Hi, welcome to our first garden. This lovely garden is owned by Nancy and John Dooley and is situated in the village of Saugerties. This garden is an heirloom garden and has a feel of a cottage garden. Why don't we take a step into the garden and talk with our gardener now? This is Nancy Dooley and this is her lovely garden. Nancy, thank you for inviting us into your garden. Oh, my pleasure. Did you enjoy having your garden on the tour? I certainly did. I loved having everyone here and asking questions and just looking at everything. And it was most enjoyable for me. I bet it was a lot of work for you to get your garden ready for the tour. It certainly was. We had we worked very hard here and had a long way to go, but um, just made my list in the morning and away we went. Great. Um, Nancy, your garden is just so lovely and lush here. How many years have you been working on this garden? Well, we've been living here about 25 years, and when we first arrived, there was absolutely nothing around the house except some uh, shrubs in the front. And uh, bit by bit, we just tackled pieces of it. But I was working full time and really couldn't do too much. But once I retired, I really jumped in with both feet. So how long have you been a full-time gardener? Well, I've been retired 10 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I, I know when we talked, you said there are still phases of your garden that are maybe only two years old. Do you have That's additional correct. plans as well? Well, my next, my next project or two is I would like to do some espalier, and uh, I would like to have a wildflower garden. Oh. So I also like to have a, um, a water garden. Oh, that's lovely. So that's, that's lovely. what I want to do next. I know that uh, before you lived here, you lived near me, although I didn't yes, live there then. Did yes. you have a garden at your other house We as did. Well? But you know, uh, we lived in uh, Malden, and our house was very, very old, and it was built into a cliff so that the second story looked at the river. But down below, I had to deal with a cliff for gardening, and uh, it was pretty tricky. But um, we had we had a very nice spot there, so this and is we a loved it. Here. This is flat, <laughs> and there are no stones. <laughs> okay. I'm standing here, and I'm smelling your Oriental lilies, and yeah. they're just wonderful. Yeah, aren't they so fragrant? They're lovely, especially in the evening. Yeah, you know. Yeah, they're just yeah. they're my favorite. Yeah. I just yeah. love them. And I'm also standing here looking across your swimming pool at the most amazing display of hostas. How long ago were those planted? Well, they were kind of here uh, in another spot. And then just bit by bit, I just kept transplanting them, you know, and they multiply beautifully. And I just think they like it where they are. And so they're very contented. I'm assuming that here in the village, you don't have deer problems? Once in a while. Once in we a while. had a little family here last year that would peek out at us as we're gardening, but I don't see them this year, so not a real problem. How, would, how many hours a week, if you weren't on the garden tour, how many hours <laughs> a week would you say you spend working in your garden? Well, it's a real passion with me. Um, I, I could work in the gardens uh, from dawn to dusk, and I have many times. So I, I'd say uh, if I have nothing else planned for the day, I'll work around four or five hours. Wow. Yeah. 
That's great. It's not a chore. I know you love roses. Yeah. And we've talked about yep. your roses, and we've talked about the fact that you spend a fair amount of time on the internet looking at gardening yes, things. Yes, I do. And subscribe to a lot of gardening yeah, magazines. Yeah, I do. I do. So it's all part of the whole, uh -huh. the whole gardening addiction. There's wonderful websites. Better Homes and Gardens has a wonderful website. Uh, Fine Gardening, which is a wonderful gardening magazine, has a great website. And uh, they give you landscaping tips and designs, and uh, I'm on it all the time. Do you buy most of your plants locally, oh, or have yeah. you ordered things up through the internet? I have. I really have never ordered through the internet, um, but I do buy things, an awful lot of things at Adams, and uh, I buy a lot of things at Boyce's. Give them a plug. Yes, yes, <laughs> very good. They're very well, good. Well, this is just so beautiful, well, and I really thanks wanna, ever so much. Want to thank you for inviting us in. I'm sorry that the arbor isn't in full bloom with your beautiful roses right yeah. now. Yeah, we'll miss that. Well, that's got a woodbine on it, which is a very common vine you see growing in the woods is which where I got it but I put it there because it turns beautiful colors in the fall oh great and uh, that's why that's there well thank you so much for sharing your gardens with oh us you're today. more than welcome delighted to have you here okay Welcome to our next stop on the tour. This lovely garden, right on the water, is owned by Marjorie Strider, who is a quite successful artist. So let's go ahead in and see her garden. Our next gardener is Marjorie Strider, and we're standing in front of her beautiful lily bed here. Marjorie, how long have you been gardening on this property? About five years. And I know that you're an artist and very creative. Can you tell us how your um, talent as an artist spread over into your beautiful garden? Well, I think mostly it's my ability f with colors and uh, design. I look at the garden as really just one artwork, uh, separate from my studio. And uh, I like to make a map of it and place the colors where, like, I have yellow and red together and things like that. As we'll see, Marjorie's garden is right on the water, which makes a lovely setting for the whole thing, and I'm sure that inspired you, and also probably helped you make the decision to buy this particular house. Oh, that's the reason I bought it, was it's right on the water, and also I have a swimming pool. But uh, being right between two, I, I call them rivers, I guess they call them creeks, but right where two creeks meet, and there's all sorts of wildlife, and it's just absolutely gorgeous. We're right where the, the platycill and the esopus right, meet, right? Right. It's really quite a lovely confluence when they come together. Right. Um, I know that you also had bought some ducks this year, and I saw yes. them. They're not here today. We can't find them, but we saw them the last <laughs> time, and they were walking around through the flower beds and enjoying themselves. Do you entertain much here? Um, not a lot, but some. I have cookouts. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. It's such a lovely property. My whole family was here for the July the 4th, and it was really nice. Oh, that's nice. And I hope everything was in bloom. and Not quite, not quite. but close enough. <laughs> and how was your experience being on the tour? Oh, that was, it was lovely. lovely. Yeah. I was amazed at how many people. I thought maybe there'd just be like 10 or 11, and it was, <laughs> they just kept coming. No, it was like 275 it was wonderful. people. Wonderful. Um, how much time do you think you, you had to spend each week to get ready to be on the tour, you know, with your gardens? I didn't really spend any extra time because I garden all the time in the spring. I have an assistant, fortunately, who helps me with the garden, and uh, we do it every day. What, what inspired you to start gardening when you, when you very first started? I assume it was before here? Oh, yes, I gardened as a child. Okay. My father was a frustrated farmer. And uh, we always had a big garden, and he taught us how to do it, and I grew to really enjoy it. So it's nice to be able to do it That's again. That's wonderful. Yeah, because I lived in the city for 25 years. And missed it. And I couldn't garden at all except on the windowsill. <laughs> so this is a really lovely change. Well, thank you for sharing your beautiful garden with us today. You're very welcome. Thank you for coming.
welcome to our next garden, which is owned by Mary Alice and Ken Lindquist. And this is Mary Alice's Lady of the Garden. And as you can see, Mary Alice is a very talented artist. So we're going to get to see these beautiful gardens that surround this old stone house. Welcome to the garden of Mary Alice and Ken Lindquist and our buddy here, DJ the Labradoodle. This is Ken, and we want to welcome you to this beautiful garden. Ken, how long have you and Mary Alice been gardening here? Oh, I think it's about 36 years now. Wow, wow. And I, I, as I know, Mary Alice, I guess, does most of the gardening, but you help? Well, I help. I mow the, mow the grounds and uh, move the mulch around. Okay. Mary Alice couldn't be with us today, but I did um, get some information from her regarding her garden, and hopefully I'll be able to fill in a little bit. Um, what have been some of the challenges that, that you think that the two of you have faced as you've tried to develop this garden? Well, we have a lot of wildlife around here. and uh, Deer and things deer, eating the garden. To, yes, uh, although we're fortunate in that we have a number of uh, apple trees and fruit trees here, and the deer seem to... Uh, devote a lot of their attention to those and not on the, fl on the flowers. I know one of the things we want people to see is Mary Alice's father planted uh, a grapevine here. And yes, I think he did. this year you resurrected it? Yes, I, uh, the, <coughs> the uh, vineyard had kind of gotten out of hand and I trimmed it back quite a bit and put new, uh, a new arbor up. Okay. Um, several of the things that Mary Alice told me about her garden, and Mary Alice is an artist, as I mentioned earlier, and it really shows in her garden. Uh, behind me are, um, are beautiful orange daylilies, and Mary Alice, as an artist with an artist's eye, actually added some not real little sticks in here that totally carry the color throughout that bed. And during the tour, people actually came up and asked her what kind of plants those were, but they're not plants. Um, one of the beautiful things here at Mary Alice's, and you don't mind if I call it Mary Alice's garden, is um, she has a lovely vegetable garden with heirloom tomatoes growing in it and a small cutting garden. Um, it's just lovely. Her delphinium are spectacular. Um, she has an arbor that uh, earlier in the season had beautiful pink roses all over it. And we talked about it and she was upset that they would not be in bloom for the tour. So again, being very creative, she added some white artificial roses that kind of got away with it and gave the feeling of what it would be like if it had that. In another spot, very creatively, where she had to cut back a bleeding heart because the bleeding hearts are past now, she filled it in with decorative bows and ribbons. So creative. This is just a beautiful, beautiful property. Uh, the stone house is how old, Ken? Well, we've dated it to 1786, but wow. I, think it, uh, I think it was here before that. Wow, that's amazing. Well, this is just a beautiful property, and I hope you all enjoy looking at it as the camera shows you all of the garden. Thank you, Ken. You're welcome.
Welcome to our next garden. This garden is owned by Ruth Edwy, who is a landscape designer and artist. And we're going to walk through her arbor into her garden. This is our gardener, Ruth Edwy. Welcome, Ruth. Thank you. Welcome to you. How long have you been gardening at this beautiful property? Uh, about 35, 36 years. Wow. Wow. What was it like when you started here? Was some of this here? Or did no, you nothing do all was of here. It? Absolutely wow. nothing was here. So you had to design everything that's everything. here? Everything, yes. Wow. That's quite something. Well, it's a... Um, um, a labor of a love. A labor of love, yes. Um, I know that one of your particular interests is trees, and I know nothing about trees. Can you tell us a little bit about the trees that are on the property? My particular interest is in Japanese maples, the varieties. And I grow a lot uh, of different varieties, and um, ever since the landscape has really been set, I've been growing them and dogwoods from babies. So I have a lot of those now that are trees. Um, that's really great. American dogwoods, dogwoods, another favorite tree. Um, actually, anything that is beautiful year-round is what I look for. That's great. Yeah. Another thing that you'll see on this property is that uh, Ruth is quite a collector of daylilies. I've yes. seen colors of daylilies here that I have never seen anywhere. They're really quite beautiful. Can you tell us something about your daylilies? Well, I've been collecting them for about 32 years. And uh, as everything else, I've been um, upgrading as new varieties mm -hmm. come out that are more beautiful than the old varieties. And I probably have about 110, 120 varieties wow. of daylilies. And the deer let me have some in bloom. <laughs> uh, and uh, it's just, it's all a joy. One of the really beautiful things about your garden is that it has a backdrop of Overlook Mountain and the lake behind it. That's another joy. <laughs> it really is. It makes it very serene, very peaceful. Um, it's my, I've created my little paradise. Can you tell us a little bit about the space we're standing in front of? Well, this is my Japanese garden. Um, and everything, you know, takes years. And the fence only went in about uh, six years ago. Uh, even though it was originally planned for 36 years ago. Wow. Um, it's changed quite a bit over time, simplifying, um, simplifying, and simplifying. Cool. That's about it. Another really pretty thing here that Ruth has added are these wonderful, colorful birdhouses that you're going to see as we go through the property. They're really quite beautiful. How was it being on the tour? Was, was it, I had a, it was a lot of fun, and thank goodness it was a beautiful it was. day. It was a beautiful day. Low humidity, breezy, and uh, a nice group coming through with, with really no lull or mm -hmm. just a minor lull. Right. And that was very pleasant. I know they all appreciated your beautiful mm -hmm. garden and your hard work. How much time do you think you spend a week in your garden? Uh, not much. Not anymore. Really? Yeah, because I, spring, fall, I make sure it's really clean, get everything ready. And uh, because I look at my gardens and flowers probably four or five times a day, if I see a weed, I pull, pull it out. out. And uh, that's it. And most of the summer is spent looking at what I'm going to move. <laughs> you have such a lovely property and a beautiful pool. Do you entertain here a lot? No. No. Really? No. You don't share this with people, huh? Um, <laughs> most people I know are, are too busy with their own lives. Okay. No, I invite people, you know, come swimming and... Right. Um, it's just so beautiful. It should be Very shared. few people I know are really gardeners. So that's the difficult part. I'd love to share the garden, you know, because... And you did on the tour. Yeah, and I did and, on the and tour. And people yeah. certainly appreciated yeah. it. Well, is there anything else you want to tell us about your gardens? Um, I will probably always continue expanding it. Um, I hope to create a sh bigger shade garden over time always add more trees, Japanese maples, and it just goes on. Well, thank you so much for sharing your gardens with thank us you. today. Thank you so much. You're welcome.
welcome to our next garden. Our next garden is owned by Elaine and Len DiCiaro. Elaine is a certified master gardener, and you're going to see flowers here that are so happy. <laughs> Here we are in the shadow of Overlook Mountain down a long driveway at the hidden garden of Elaine DeCharo, Master Gardener. Elaine, how long have you been gardening here? This is actually the uh, garden's third year. It's so hard to believe that when you see it. When you see Elaine's plants, they're so big and happy, you can't believe that they're so new. It must be a labor of love. It is a labor. So, <laughs> it is. So healthy. Your garden is just a joy to look at. I just wow. love it. You have so many different kinds of varieties of plants and things that people have not seen before. Did you have a lot of questions about that on the tour? Definitely. We have lots of questions about uh, all the different varieties and what cultivars, and I was happy to give them whatever information I could. And it was such a pleasure to be on the tour. Everyone oh, was so positive and lots of interesting people. A wonderful day. Oh, I enjoyed great. it. It's great. Yeah. What are some of your favorite plants? Um, I would have to say I've been, because of circumstances, restricted to deer resistant plants, but I love the uh, Coreopsis moonbeam. Uh, it's also a tough little plant that flowers all summer long and is xeric, which is a benefit because it's low maintenance. Uh, the echinacea, Russian sage, there are lots of them. The list goes on and on. And we'll see them as we go <laughs> yes, through your garden. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. Now, do you have mostly sun or shade in your garden? Predominantly sun. Sun. It's so this important. will be a sun garden. Next garden we're going to see is a shade garden. So you get an idea of the different plants that do well in one type of garden or another. Elaine, I know that you're a certified master gardener. How did you get into that and what does it entail? Actually, I got into it because of my love of gardening. I had taken several classes down at the Cornell Extension uh, just as a gardener and these are available to anyone in Ulster County. And that just kind of led into it. They do classes every two years for master gardeners and when the opportunity arose and they invited me to uh, apply, I did. They give you a wonderful education. Uh, it lasts from October to March and uh, have professors come down from Cornell with PhDs and you actually begin to learn how much you don't know about gardening. <laughs> it's a, actually eye-opening. They have classes on botany, entomology, very extensive and in turn you volunteer 200 hours uh, actually excuse me it's 100 hours to the community uh, designing uh, public gardens and uh, just volunteering time on the hotline which is 340 dirt for any gardener who would like some assistance with problems that they're having we do soil pH testing uh, plant ID and insect ID. And this is all uh, in coordination with uh, Cornell. I know that you also um, sometimes are at the farmer's market in Saugerties. Yes. Volunteering with your knowledge. Mm -hmm. and Barbara Bravo and I uh, sit at the farmer's market one Saturday each month. So if people in Saugerties want to come and get more information, they could yes, come there. Yes, definitely. I'm glad to help. Elaine, I noticed that you have this lovely little pond with some big bullfrogs and some goldfish in it. When did you add that to your garden? Actually, um, in 05 was when we put it in. Uh, my sons did that for me as a gift. And uh, we have a koi in, with the bullfrogs. I know, which I saw I'm the bullfrogs sure and heard. I heard them. Yes, yes. <laughs> they're entertaining. <laughs> uh, and uh, some pond fish. And, so the, the fish were all invited, were, you introduced them, but the frogs just came on their own? Yes. Wow. It's amazing how they can find the pond through the woods. You yeah. have a, a lovely screen porch. I'm wondering if you um, entertain here a lot. Well, uh, we haven't been here too long, but we've had parties and barbecues. We enjoy the screen porch immensely. No mosquitoes. No mosquitoes. Which have been a problem. In the along, garden. Yes, along <laughs> with the Japanese beetles. 
Well, it's just such a beautiful property and such happy plants. And I, I really have enjoyed seeing it. And thank you so much for sharing your garden with all of us. I'm happy to do it. Well, it's been a long day touring our gardens today, and we're at the sixth and last garden, which belongs to Cindy Caparelli, and Bub is here to help me with the rest of the garden tour. I'm here with our gardener, Cindy Caparelli, in her lovely garden. Cindy, how long have you been gardening in this property? I've been here about 23 years and started actively gardening about 10 years ago. So what happened 10 years ago that made you decide to start gardening? Well, we had to start, we had to put up a picket fence because of my dogs. So when the picket fence went up, I said, well, we've got to have flowers alongside those fences. And then when we put a sunroom on, we decided that we needed something to look out outside of that sunroom. So the garden started in the middle and just seemed to keep expanding and expanding and expanding. expanding. And you have a lot of shade here, so that yes. was probably a challenge for you. Yes, so we had to go with mostly hydrangeas, hostas, boxwoods, um, lilies. Um, hostas seems to be the, the... But I must say, your hostas are unbelievable. Oh, thank you. They are huge, and so many different varieties. Um, during the tour, did a lot of people ask you about the hostas? Yes, they, that was probably the... Uh, between the hostas and the hydrangeas, the blue lace cap. That was the big hit of the day. Those blue lace caps are just spectacular. Thank you. I mean, and we actually have uh, some really pretty lilies here as well. It's, it's quite a pretty garden. Thank it really you. is. It has a nice softness and a nice yeah. feel about it. We wanted it to be more a natural look, um, not too formal, but yet a little organized. So I think I've got the right mix. When I love the bears. Oh, th that's the added tr attraction. <laughs> I'm really into animals, and I love bears. Um, occasionally, we could get the real thing around here. Uh -oh. So uh, <laughs> I figured that might be a decoy. <laughs> um, how was it being on the tour? Was it a lot of work to get ready? It was a lot of work to get ready. Um, however, the day itself was so rewarding. Um, my husband, I could not believe, we both were exhausted Friday night. And um, when people started coming and complimenting, it just made all the, it made it all worthwhile because you knew the fruits of your labor were being rewarded and you were, I was very surprised that people were as excited as they were about my gardening. I didn't think it was as spectacular no, as... And I, I hadn't been here for a while since I saw you the last time, so this is the first time I saw it recently, but I heard all about it uh, from people calling me and saying, where did she get those hostas and those lace cap hydrangeas were beautiful. So people really enjoyed it. Oh, thank you. No, it was, a, it was really a lot of fun. We saw people we hadn't seen for 15 years. Oh, that's great. And everybody seemed to be so relaxed and having such a good time. It was truly a pleasure. Do you entertain much here in the garden? 
Um, I wish I could say yes, we entertain in our sunroom a lot because it's air conditioned and people can always look out. <laughs> and it's especially nice in the wintertime. We can look out and look at the bears and the snow falling. That's great. Well, thank you so much. Oh, for you're very your welcome. It's my pleasure. Us. My pleasure. So thank you very much for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed our tour of the gardens. Remember, if you'd like to be on our mailing list for the Secret Gardens of Saugerties tour, you can send your name and your address to Secret Gardens Tour, P.O. Box 32, Malden, that's M-A-L-D-E-N, New York, 12453. We hope to see you then. And remember, the gardens are a secret but our tour is not, so please join us for our 2008 tour.